It's the Daily Doug. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Daily Doug. I'm speaking with Mike Massey here. This is going to be quite a fun thing. Mike actually reached out to me, so I don't know if I'm the one being interviewed or <laughs> if he's the one being interviewed. We're just going to have fun with it today. Hi, Mike. It's good to, Hi. to meet you. Uh, you as well. Excellent, excellent. So where are you these days? I live in Littleton, Colorado, which is a Littleton, suburb of Colorado. Denver. Yeah. Okay. It's been a yeah, long I went to high time. School, since yeah, I went to high school in Boulder. Oh, okay. you've been here? You've been here? Yeah. My, uh, my sister-in-law did her master's work at Boulder, so it's oh, been a right long on. time, but it's really pretty out there. I remember Estes yeah, Park yeah. And, and all mm -hmm. the good stuff, so there you mm -hmm. go. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, we have gathered to kind of learn more about our, each other, right? Uh, yeah, you, you've absolutely. had an interest in what I've, uh, I've been doing. I definitely have an mm -hmm. interest in what you've been doing. I have some questions mm -hmm. for you and I know you have some questions for me. I will start. Let's put it. Go ahead. Let's go. Let's go that yeah. way. So talk to me about your musical training. I know that you ended up with a law degree yet yeah. you are working <laughs> as a full-time musician. Um, mm -hmm. You had to have been in a choir or in bands mm -hmm. along the way. Did you go to music school or did you just mm -hmm. pick this up and play? Talk to, talk about your musical training. Yeah. Yeah. So I started off um, at CU in Boulder as a music major. Okay. And, um, and that, those are some of the first voice lessons, lessons I ever took. Hmm. Um, I, you know, I, as a little kid, I took some piano lessons. And my mom, like I had three older sisters and younger brother, and they were all like my three sisters had taken piano. We had a piano in the house and upright. And, um, but she, my mom noticed that I was the one who would tinker with it, like just for fun and nobody else really mm. would. And I was picking out like, you know, yes and journey songs and stick songs by ear, you know, just kind of, you know, playing along. And um, she's like, maybe we should give him the lessons. And so I started taking lessons and, and, you know, did like little talent shows in, in elementary school playing piano and such. And then eventually kind of gravitated towards guitar in high school where I, I got an acoustic guitar. I got a, I got an ovation, a celebrity applause as it was like most people's first guitar, you know, mm. especially the acoustic and, uh, and was playing that for a while and, and started, I kind of taught myself, I had a little bit of lessons, but I didn't really use the lessons for, for like theory and, and, oh, you, sure. know, did, you know, I was just like, teach me this song. And then the yep. next lesson, teach me this song. Yep. And like, it was, you know, it was so old school that it was literally like this, the time that our lesson was spent with with my instructor listening to a piece of the music and then writing it down a tab, you know, hitting stop and then listening to the next part, writing it down a tab. So like, here's the intro to the song you wanted to learn. Like that's how, that's how long it took for a half an hour lesson. You know, like, okay, cool. That, you know, so it was, it, <laughs> yeah, that rings uh, familiar to me because I was doing the same sort of stuff in high school. I was mm -hmm. trying to pick out on the piano. I'm like, Oh, if I play this progression, I can move it here. And this is how the, so I was like, really into uh formulas and patterns and how they just yeah. lay themselves out on the piano yeah. that's how i gravitated toward it that's cool and that yeah. and that kind of that idea of formulas and such kind of translates to using a capo on guitar where mm. everything is just becomes relative to each other and you're just shifting it to you know and so it doesn't really matter where one is you just put the capo wherever and you're just using different chord positions but you're really thinking one four five two sure. you know like that's sure. basically what it translates to because yeah. you don't even know what key you're in anymore. You're just like a transposing know, instrument. There you go. Yeah. How about yeah, that? basically. Exactly. And so then I, you know, I, I, I didn't, I got into my first band in, um, in ninth grade with some local guys in Boulder and who are still two dear friends of mine, Scott Slusher and Ken Benson. And they appear mm -hmm. on my YouTube channel frequently. And, uh, yeah. And then I got into a choir in high school and that was the first time I was just like, okay, choir. Okay. And then I was like, I think I can be a voice major, but I didn't really have any like real training. I just had, you know, a decent, a decent tone, but no, <laughs> no real control, no support, you know? Sure. And, and, and then I went and did voice lessons in college and it, I, I took two tracks simultaneously. I was taking classical like opera uh, lessons from what we call legit um, from, you know, the voice faculty. Right. And then I was, t and then I was taking um, belt lessons on the side from a music dance theater, uh, major who was studying belt uh, as a singing style in right. college at, and this is when i transferred to byu in, in provo utah and they had a great music program and it was just like whoa i was just i was in heaven and mm -hmm. it's even just gotten better like they've invested so much money i was just like oh my gosh like if, to go to that school today i'm like people have no idea what you've got at your, at your fingertips you know yeah. anyway in terms of te technology and spaces and everything it's just great but That's um so yes yeah, so, so the belt lessons kind of taught me 
how to sing rock. And I was also kind of learning classical at the same time. So it just, it gave me more familiarity with my instrument and kind of how to use it in different scenarios. And, and I've kind of applied that um, to my craft. Really cool. You know, mm -hmm. more uh, like legit voice teachers these days, I think are uh, adopting that more popular uh, style of singing mm -hmm. as one mm -hmm. of the tools in a, in mm -hmm. a vocalist uh, toolbox, you know, exactly. And not just something that, Oh, they sing that way. And we sing this way. It tends right. to not be, and that's been a relatively recent change mm -hmm. from what I have observed, um, mm -hmm. you know, being more open to that fun. Mm -hmm. fun, fun, fun. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, I did a lot of great choral music at BYU. I was in the BYU Singers. That was sort of the elite choir at BYU. And did you, you know, sing with was, Ron, Ron Staley? Um, yes, yes. Yeah, I know. I Ron. love Ron Staley. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, I adore Ron Staley. Yeah. yeah, he was he was great. And and people often comment on my YouTube channel about like I get comments a lot about I can finally understand the words to some of these songs I've known all my life because sure. you have such great diction. I'm like. That's Ron Staley, sure, <laughs> you know, sure. that's where my diction came yeah. from. Absolutely. Ron's, Ron's choirs have been some mm -hmm. of my, have put out some of my favorite recordings over oh, the last okay. 20 years. Because you have to remember, I'm a choir rat. So yeah, that's exactly. where I come from. So, I mean, yeah. the, the, you know, both of our worlds are relatively small. So mm -hmm, we'll probably mm -hmm. know some similar people. Yeah. You know, Do as, you know Mac Wilberg too? Of course. Mac Wilberg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I took I've, he was he was concert choir director when I was there, and then I took I'll be I, darn. Uh, upgraded to BYU singers. Yeah, yeah. So 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 those who don't know, Mac Wilberg is now the conductor of the Mormon Tabernacle, Mormon Tabernacle. Choir. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he's got some of the best uh, orchestral choral settings of anybody mm -hmm. working today. Mm -hmm. I mean, I believe he's, that he's got the he's got the horses in the barn to do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, he's, but he's also a really talented arranger for sure. Yeah, yeah, Great. we do. Yeah, we sang some of his stuff. We did that. I don't know if you remember, there was a there was a PBS like Thanksgiving special. It was BYU and, and I was in that I was in BYU singers at the time. So nice. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's my that's my choir background and then and then I you know I went and I, I graduated I actually studied sound recording under undergrad as my kind of my emphasis I wasn't a performance major I was a sound recording major with a but I had to have an instrument and mine was voice and so I, I graduated music and then I went to law school because I'm like I guess I need a real job you know and, and none of the studios were offering me paying jobs they all wanted me to be an intern for free I'm just like yeah. I need to work for a living so yeah so I went and uh, I went to law school at BYU and and then I became a public defender in Salt Lake City I was there for 13 years and mm. uh, and then about 10 years ago, quit the day job and became a musician full time when my wow. YouTube channel just kind of yeah. took off a little bit. So is that where the pizza joint is out in Utah? Yeah, it's in, it's in Salt Lake. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. The famous exactly. pizza joint. <laughs> <laughs> right. The pie. It's called the pie. Yeah. It's really I, good. It's good pizza. <laughs> I, I remember seeing uh, those videos of yours back in the day mm -hmm. and... Mm -hmm. It reminded me of friends that uh, I had in Omaha, where I grew up. And, oh, cool! And we would go to uh, small venues on the weekends, and they would play their original music. Or I had some other mm -hmm. friends that did acoustic covers, and they were mm -hmm. always the most fun time because yeah, there were songs yeah. you could sing along to, and mm -hmm. uh, it's just you know the soundtrack of our lives, you know. And it's great to yeah. hang out with people and enjoy those. So. Great exactly. Stuff. How long? So, so you, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. ahead. I was going to ask you a question. So, sure. like, I want to ask you about. Um, I know that your channel, you do reactions to. It's it's been a lot of prog rock, and then you've kind of branched out from there, right? Sure. Into, sure. So you've done some like heavier. Well, how would you call Dream Theater? What? How would you classify them? They're not really prog. They're kind of metal prog or prog metal. We, or, I would call them right? progressive metal. Progressive metal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So you branched out there and did some fusion jazz and such, mm -hmm. right? So, but what, what was your kind of bread and butter as a kid? Like, what did you listen to? Like, what did you grow you up know, on? You know, it's funny because I was not a musical kid from a musical family. Okay. I'm a sports, wow, okay. I'm a jock. I'm a sports kid oh, wow. from a sports family. Right. And, on. uh, you know, my dad played minor league baseball. He's the shortest of five brothers and he's six, two. Oh, wow. I was, you know, I was, uh, I, I was tall for my age. I was coordinated for my age. I played basketball. I played baseball. I was going to go to college on a baseball scholarship until okay. I hurt my shoulder pitching. Oh no. You know? And, and so I, you know, my parents didn't have a, a turntable in the house okay. at all, wow. okay. you know, no instruments. And, 
you know, mm-hmm. if, if we were going to listen to something or watch something, it was going to be the game. You know, the mm-hmm. Cardinals game mm-hmm. is on, so we got to watch, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, you know. So I, I fell in love with with sports and with games. And as we moved to new places, we moved to Omaha in, in the start of my eighth grade year, and I was convinced somehow by the uh, choir teacher to join choir. And the, and the way mm. that I, he actually got me was he said, you don't, you don't need a, a, you know, a study hall or anything. Come, come join the choir. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I've never sung in my life. I have no idea what <laughs> I'm doing. He's like, it's okay. I'll teach you. Wow. We need guys. We need guys because oh. right now in the eighth grade choir, there's 35 girls and like seven or eight guys. I'm like, what time? Does wow. choir start? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> right? And I found it. I found it to be the most vulnerable, difficult thing I'd ever tried. Wow. I had always been good at school. I could throw a ball. I could catch a ball, mm-hmm. you know, that sort of thing. But mm-hmm. trying to pick out a melody or doing it yourself and being mm-hmm. like doing a solo in front of everybody or doing like a duet, it was mm-hmm. everybody can see me. There are no, there's no protection. And, yeah. and it enthralled me. It scared me. It made me really curious about chasing that feeling. And so I, I throughout high school, I got more into music on the side. Mm-hmm. And as I had, you know, a knee surgery, a, so, a shoulder surgery, by the time I got to be a senior in high school, I was an all state yeah. choir and really That's loving great. it and really loving That's it. And, great. and I went to three different universities before I figured out what I was going to study. And it was finally the choir kids go, you can do our theory homework better than we can. You better either shut up or join the class. And so I did. And <laughs> I got into writing and, and mm. you know, building my own things. And then it was kind of off to the races from there. So it's, That's really, amazing. it's really been late in my life. And it's yeah. one of the main reasons but why I didn't know a whole lot of the classic repertoire. Okay. Because you just, it wasn't a musical family. You're right. So like, and, you know, yeah. all that my family would listen to would be like the Oak Ridge Boys or Kenny Rogers. <laughs> I've got Kenny yeah. Rogers uh, album oh, right yeah. back there. There you go. There Kenny. Is. You know, my first concert <laughs> my mom took me to was a Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers concert when they sang nice. Islands in the Stream. You know, sure. so I, I knew some like uh, some Christian music because my family is, mm-hmm. is Christian and and just like some some basic country music but other than mm-hmm. that i didn't know about it and then when i got going in studying music i had to go back and learn all of the classical repertoire so i like for mm-hmm. years i didn't spend yeah. time listening to the back catalog of the great rock and roll classics and so mm-hmm. because fast- it wasn't on the syllabus <laughs> right so fast forward all the way through to covid when i lost my gig i'm like what am i going to do mm-hmm. now i've been in the in the mm-hmm. private sector teaching for all this time and no colleges are hiring during covid so mm-hmm. i started the youtube channel and mm-hmm. it was actually my little brother that said you should do reaction style videos yeah and uh and so i started with iron maiden of all things and oh uh, that's so funny and uh it it really ramped up and so i've just been kind of chasing this for a few years now and it's been quite yeah. liberating so that's kind of me in that, yeah show. That's cool. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, I kind of did the similar thing where I just went off on my own, you know, but yeah. mine was deep diving into music, you know, and quitting the day job. So I can, I can relate to that for sure. I still, and that's love, so cool. I still love that yeah. I'm, you know, getting to stretch my musical muscles on a daily basis. It's just in a completely yeah. different way than I've done it in mm-hmm. the past. Yeah. So you didn't like, you didn't even know the Beatles or the, the Stones well, or. Thanks to my wife who is uh, a really nice classic rock fan. I, I've come cool. to know some of the classic I mean, I've got Abbey Road up there. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. my favorite Beatles mm-hmm. album. Right um, on, yeah. And so I've come to know the Beatles. I've come to know some of the major uh, hits over the years. But uh, mm-hmm. like when I started doing the channel, I was like, Genesis, okay, Land of Confusion. Genesis fans are like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Supper's ready. Right. Supper's ready. <laughs> yeah. You know, for yeah, the yeah, fifth, yeah. you know, lamb lies <laughs> right. down. That's the ones exactly. that we want. So it, it, it was just starting mm-hmm. to fill in all the holes. When I, my first interview that I did as the Daily Doug, I called Rick Wakeman, yeah. Rick Wakefield. 
because oh no, <laughs> because I know I know sports, and Rick was a great knuckleballer, you know. So it's just it's part of it. So I love that. I yeah. love that. That's amazing. So um, um, yeah. let me let me ask you something. When I sure. hear you sing, I went through and I've uh, to prepare for this. I've I've re-listened to a lot of your of your music, and and it's nice. it's really wonderful. Um, oh, my, thank you. My analytical ear though picks up on something that you do that really um, impresses me. Like when you okay. say "Space Odyssey," you mm-hmm. take Odyssey. On yeah, you say oddity. <laughs> yes, oddity. Yes, you, you take on the vocal inflection and almost the um, uh, just the color of David. The timbre, Jones. yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and mm-hmm. even his uh, this the way that he speaks. You know the way that mm-hmm. he sings. When you sing "No Rain," you sound like the singer from Blind Melon. I can't remember mm-hmm. his name off the top of my head. When you sing Shannon Scarborough, Hoon. yeah, when you mm-hmm. sing Scarborough mm-hmm. Fair, it reminds me of Art Garfunkel, and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. You know, more than a feeling, I get Brad Delp vibes. Talk about the resonance, the vowels, the tone color that needs yeah. to adapt as a um, mm-hmm. cover musician more than anything else, and how you yeah. uh, bring that to the forefront. Yeah, well, I think part of it comes from just I've spent. Like that's how I was, how I taught myself to sing was just Mm. like, like my question was, how did he make that sound? You know, Mm. like, how did he make that sound? That was the question I kept asking myself. How did he make that sound? Where is that in my voice? And I will tell you that there are certain sounds I never found in my voice that I looked for. I'm just Mm. like, oh, I wanted to make that sound. I wish I could make that sound. But um, a couple specific sounds, but, um, but like starting with the Beatles, for example, you had like, I had this contrast because you had this beautiful, sweet dulcet tone of McCartney and then you had this kind of nasal focused tone of Lennon and I was like I wanted to do both of those things I didn't want to choose you know and so I would figure I'd try to find that in my voice and and the Beatles are kind of like on my mind right now because I'm I'm a singer of a local Beatles cover band just kind of for fun it's just kind of a side project called Rubber Souls and we have a gig tomorrow night so I've been like we practiced last night I've been listening to Beatles all day and you know just like and I play piano. I play. Um, I do all the Paul McCartney piano songs, and I play awesome. acoustic guitar and, and electric guitar. But we have, you know, we have another keyboardist. We're not. We're not like we don't dress up like the Beatles. We just recreate uh, the music, you know, because cool. there's five of us. Because it takes five, you know. Anyway, but um, so uh, are, are yeah, you, I was just like, just as a aside, are you gonna play like yeah. one album, or you do like a, a Beatles retrospective? No, we do. It's just, no, it's just kind of a variety. Like we do cool. Sgt. Pepper stuff. We do. We do, you know, we throw in She Loves You, but we're doing You Never Give Me Your Money, you know, and we're doing, you know, we just got, we do Penny Lane, we just kind of do it all, you know, it's just so kind of a variety. I told you my favorite, what's your favorite Beatles album? Oh. Favorite Beatles album. Mm. Or if you were going to perform an entire album from the Beatles, which one would you pick first? Well, I think, I think, I mean, Abbey Road is probably the most impressive one to take on, but yeah. I love, you know, I love the... I love Magical Mystery Tour. I love Sgt. Peppers. I love, you know, I love the middle period, you know, Rubber Soul, and I love yeah. Revolver. We do a lot of Revolver. We do a lot of Rubber Souls. I've got so, the, yeah. um, I've got the box set of Revolver over there. You can't really see uh, it. There, there yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I see it back there. I do see yeah. it back there. Yep, 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 yep. And so, but, but, but back to your original question is, it was just became of like me listening to different singers and saying, I want to sound like that. And, and like, can I find that in my voice? That, and, and it's always kind of straddling a fine line because I want to like emulate without imitating You know, I want to create the vibe of the original, but also like people, you know, it goes through the filter of my voice. I can't change that. So it always sounds like me regardless. But, but I, yeah, I did a gig last week, a private gig and a guy came up to me afterwards. He's like, you're a chameleon. He's like, you sounded like every song you sang. You sounded like the original singer. I'm like, thank you. I'm like, that's kind of what I'm trying to do just because. I don't know. Like, I want, I want to represent the song yeah. to somebody as, as if they'd never heard the original. I'm like, this is as close as I can get to showing you what the original sounded like. Yeah. You know, if you, if I were to play it alone and, and, and maybe it's a part of it's my insecurity because I think the, the closer I get to the original, the more that the fan of the original will like it because it yeah. reminds them of what they already like. And yeah. so they don't, it's less of me is involved perhaps, you know? And so that was always kind of my, you know, like I was always a background singer in restaurants. So people, it's like the jukebox is on, but it's live, you know, and now, you know, they come up and make, instead of throwing money in the jukebox, they throw money in the tip jar, you know? You and that was kind of, kind of my vibe. Yeah. Hmm. Fun. Fun. Yeah. So go ahead. 
No, well, uh, let's see. Uh, all I was going to go for with that was like, uh, it's just impressive to me that you're that you adapt to the needs of the song. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's, it always sounds, uh, it, it's just amazing to me how much like I can tell where the placement's slightly different, where that's mm-hmm. older, a little bit back, it's brighter, or it's a little bit darker, it's more through an ooh, or you know, yeah. it's got a bit of a British accent. Yeah. If it's a British singer, you know, that sort of <laughs> right, thing. It's right. really cool. Um, Thank one you. Of the, yeah. One of the, so I'm sure you have played your uh, fair share of weddings over oh, yeah. the years. Oh, yeah. I so do weddings, this, people. I do weddings. Yeah, there you go. So I, <laughs> yeah. sure, this is kind of off the beaten path, but uh, I was just, yeah. I, I, I thought that I'd ask you this. What are some of your suggestions for like best songs for a first dance? At a wedding. Like, well, there's, there's I've definitely some, done like yeah, great memories done, well, that you've had, you know, of doing that. Yeah, I've I've done wonderful tonight a fair amount. Ah. Um, that's that that comes up more than once for sure. Um, I've done like I've done some random ones. I've done like just because they're in my repertoire. I've done like Thank You by like, by Led Zeppelin. Hmm. I've done some, Somebody by Depeche Mode. I don't know if you know that song. It's a piano song. I play it on guitar. I don't think I do. Yeah. Okay, I've done um, She's Got Away by Billy Joel. She's I also do that on guitar. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so like it just kind of – and I've done um, – I think I've done – what's it called? Oh, Unchained Melody, actually. Um, so yeah, so just kind of whatever they're in the mood for. But back to your – you asked me about my favorite Beatles. I'm going to say yeah. Beatles song. My favorite Beatles, favorite Beatles song is, is Hey Jude. I just hey. – I, I just – yeah, just that vocal is just astounding to me. It's just so beautiful and it's so perfect, and the melody and it just like, oh, yeah, that is just to me is just like the quintessential rock song. It's just beautiful. It's I just love everything great, you did with isn't that, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. pretty great. Mm-hmm. Uh, excellent. You have anything else that you want to know from me? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I just as somebody who's been exposed to some beautiful choral music as a music major, uh-huh. I'm. I haven't. I'm curious what some of your favorite choral pieces are. Wow. That let's say before. Let's say let's say 19th century and earlier, because I don't know a lot and of the 20th century stuff. Yeah, and because earlier. I like I, and earlier. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Um, so like not sticking, getting away from the 20th century. Like I don't okay. know. Maybe some of the. What about like the the Durfle and Fare Requiems? Are those 20th century or those 19th century? Well, uh, they are in the early. Well, kind of like right around. They're yeah. they're right around the corner there, and yeah. and both of those are wonderful. In fact, my mm-hmm. dissertation project was the writing of a Requiem Mass, using Which the model. One? Uh, oh, just and just writing your own. Oh, yeah. gotcha. So, gotcha. so That's for so cool. my doctorate, my uh, my doctorate is a DMA, a Doctor of Musical Arts, not a PhD. Nice. So instead of writing okay. a book or oh. some sort of treatise mine was the writing of a major work so i have a 40 oh, that's minute so cool requiem mass oh. it's hardly ever been performed <laughs> but, i love uh, that that's it great uses the model let's see mendelssohn's one of my favorites there okay. is uh, a couple of oratorios that he did that are really great but uh, uh okay. elijah gets more of the credit but saint paul paulus okay is a wonderful I heard that. it's a wonderful oratorio and i it, when I joined the Westminster Choir, uh, when I mm-hmm. uh, studied at Westminster Choir College here in New Jersey, we we would sing a bunch with the major orchestras on the East Coast. And so with Kurt nice. Mazur in the New York Philharmonic, you know, six mm-hmm. weeks after I came to school, we did no way. call us, you know, we, I, sang in oh. New York, I sang in New York with the New York Phil 14 times in two years. That's, that's so great. You know, amazing. Uh, we got to do the Verdi Requiem uh mm. with uh with ricardo muti in new york okay like six months after 9 11 happened oh wow and wow. it was um a life-changing experience uh mm-hmm. i would go to don't go to beethoven if you're a choir music fan yeah he's not the best with like voice leading and such <laughs> just like tends, in the parts yeah yeah he tends yeah. to treat voices like he treats his instruments which is poorly even though it's he's a great <laughs> writer i mean Beethoven's yeah. the, the choral symphony is what everybody goes to. It's hard as yeah. hell to sing. Yeah, I, I've sung that as a tenor before. I've been in a yeah, choir. It's that, not yeah. easy. Um, mm, no. This, uh, the Bach passion settings. Oh, yeah. I love I love St. Matthew's and and uh, actually St. John. John's too. I love them both. Yeah, yeah they're I've, both great. I've, yeah, I've I, never yeah. sung the St. John, but I've sung the St. Matthew before. It's been a long mm-hmm. time. There Have you done any of the motets? Yeah. 
Yeah. There's some good stuff there too. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah. yeah I so, did. so I, I, I used to mind Friday. I did that one. Yeah, so you joined the choir as a tenor. I joined the yeah. choir as a bass, you know, right, so, right. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. it's, so that's kind of how I, I do the things that I do when I'm following along in, with the music that I'm listening to mm -hmm. on the channel is I, I'm mm -hmm. popping into the bass lines and that's helping me to give oh, yeah. a, um, the root, like the, a the, grounding the, for if I can figure yeah, out where the bass chords are. are. And, and you asked me as we were getting ready for this, if I have perfect pitch, a lot of people ask me that I actually don't, mm -hmm. it's gotten mm -hmm. close over the years, but I've known people that have actual, like they know that frequency and they don't need anybody like they can, mm -hmm. be, you know, like one of my professors, we could be at a, you know, a loud restaurant, we go sing a C and he'd pop it out and we'd get out our pitch pipe and check him. And, you know, he'd do it. Know. That, it's amazing. Like, how does that like, but like, does that drive them crazy to hear a whole song that's performed slightly detuned? Like, well, like, you know, when they used to slow down the tape a little bit, you know, or whatever, speed yeah, up the tape, yeah. it wouldn't be at 440 anymore. Like, would that drive somebody with perfect pitch crazy? Yes. So I, I always wondered that. Okay. Yes. So this particular person who was one of my choral teachers, I remember us actually listening to a recording of a Bach motet in his office. Okay. And we were following along. And he's like, I have no idea where they are. We're like, ha ha, the teacher doesn't know where they are. He's like, no, I'm looking at E flats and they're not singing them. Oh, wow. You know? Is it just, so it just becomes like, oh, weird. It, you're, you're like so trapped like he, inside he your, doesn't, Yeah. Like he can't correct to the nearest relative pitch. That's right. That's crazy. You know, so oh. with me, I tend to tune up before I do these. Uh, if I'm doing like really guitar heavy stuff, I'm going to pick an E and get tuned up to an E because most often there's an E somewhere in there. You know? Oh wow! And so I and you can hold that in your head, like you can hold that in your head, like while something else is going on. Yeah, that's great. That's crazy. You know, it just comes with practice because you know teaching yeah. at, teaching at Westminster, we were mostly uh, teaching vocalists how to be you know the best musicians yeah. that they can be, and the knock on vocalists is that they you know have to have things sung to them or played for them, and then they mimic it mm -hmm. back right? Mm -hmm. Instead of like a violinist who comes in and just you give them a charge and, like, play, and they yeah. play it down. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. our right. goal as teachers was to try to get our uh, students as they matriculate through to be as quick as they possibly could with, with sight singing. And we'd give them all sorts of difficult things to do. Pitch memory, mm -hmm. um, you know, dictation practice, all of that sort of things where we play like mm -hmm. mock corrals and they're like, write that down all four parts, oh boy you know oh boy and i yeah. had to be better than they are the students were right. so good you right, know right 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 and that i had sense. to so i had to really buck up and and get better at it and as you teach it it does get easier and so kind of burned in your brain just being and teaching mm -hmm. undergraduate um you know chord structure and theory and all that sort of stuff with a real heavy influence towards ear training over mm -hmm. decades just mm -hmm. you know you can remember where a d is because i remember what joy to the world sounds like or i can remember, i know and that you know that's yeah and that that's the only thing i've ever been able to do like if i'm like i remember there was a time in high school when i was just so into hey jude that i was like singing it and learning it so much that I could pick out a, a middle C because it's the first note of Hey Jude. Right. And like, and, 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 and a, a high school friend, we were in the choir room. Um, this girl's like, do you have perfect pitch? I'm like, no, I'm like, I have pretty good relative pitch. And she's like, well, she's like, sing a C. I'm just like, okay. And then I just found it in my head, like, mm -hmm. or whatever it was, you know, and then she walked over the piano. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. she walked over the piano and hit what I had just sung. And she like, she freaked out. Cause it was exactly yeah. on. She's like, oh, you know, so that like, would be pitch I'm memory. Like, that, and and yeah, actually pitch memory. it's, that's, that's it's really that's fair. Because, I mean, my wife is like that. She's got a better ear than I do. And she's a French mm -hmm. horn player by trade. Mm -hmm. And and she'll remember a song. She's like, nope, wrong key. Then she'll remember oh. it. She'll think of it. And then she'll sing the note. Oh. The only trick is she hasn't That's learned crazy. what that note. Like, of all you need is that uh, piece starts with that note. And if you can remember right. what that, then you can get it. Right. And so plug into the scale. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So that's really how I've done that. And there's a lot of times, especially when I'm listening to really aggressive fusion or things that are really complicated, it gets hard to follow. And I'll tell mm, you, yeah. I have no idea where yeah. they are. 
Um, yeah. But something you said, something I was going to say, something you said earlier about like you start with a bass note, like mm. that's something I do too. Like if I'm trying to figure out a song on guitar and I don't have, you know, reliable tab on the internet or the chords are wrong or whatever, you know, I, I take shortcuts where I can just like anybody else, but right. often the, inter- the internet tab is just wrong in some place. So I have to correct it, but it helps to, you know, I have to retype the lyrics or whatever. Sure. Sometimes the lyrics are wrong too. But like if I, <laughs> if I'm figuring a song, sometimes if I'm figuring out a song out by ear, I will, I will start with the bass. I'm like the bass, if it's not the root, it's, it's in the chord somewhere. It's in the chord. You know, like that's going to give me a place to start. Yeah. And so that's like, that's always a good place for me to start too. Yeah. It was tricky because, you know, in classical music, the, the string instruments hardly ever do alternate tunings. And mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, they do occasionally, we call it score de tura, but most mm. often than anything else, it, the strings tune to the exact same things and, and there's no frets. So they're playing, mm-hmm. you know, there's a, when there are pieces that use all of these open strings that they're already tuned to, you can play fiddle like passages. And there are oh, other times where oh. you have to have everything covered, you know, and, right. and so uh, it just uh, in half positions and all that sort of stuff. So mm-hmm. learning how guitarists would be like, I'd be like, Oh, they're in E flat. That's going to be really hard for them. They're like, no, they're just tuned down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotcha. well unless the bass player isn't tuned down it's hard for the bass player maybe and you know like the rest for, of the you know the guitar player picks up another guitar and the bass player's for like, sure Damn it, e flat. for sure or they just grab a, a seven string you know or an eight string or whatever yeah, yeah. so it's, yeah, it's, exactly. it's been really eye-opening to i continue to learn at uh, a really mm-hmm. great uh, uh or accelerated uh progress type of thing because you know learning the guitar was not something mm-hmm. that was taught a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're like, like mm-hmm. look, that's a guitar. There is its open strings. <laughs> we don't use the guitar. It can stay over there. <laughs> and so um, I've, I've got one. We, we never speak there. of the guitar. <laughs> I've got one back yeah, there right now, on. this, this nice little acoustic. And I'm trying to nice. figure out where do I put my hands? Mm-hmm. So I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my philosophy as a guitar player has always been to try to Instead of, I don't always try to play the guitar part. I try to play the song, like the band, you know, like, so my, sometimes when I'm arranging a song, like my rhythm will be different from the original rhythm because I'm doing the drums and bass groove, but I'm playing the chords that the guitar played, you know, or whatever. So that's, that's part of the trick of making an acoustic arrangement is like, you can't just think about the guitar. You have to kind of take the whole song into, into your brain. Yeah. But I wanted to tell people like for the, for the sake of people that are listening to this on my channel and that maybe aren't familiar with you, Mm. the thing that, that I like the way I found Doug and, 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 the thing that I was drawn to was, I mean, not just, you know, you're a great guy and your personality and your, and your charm makes it worth sticking around. Cool. But I love the fact that your knowledge of music just being applied to the music I loved and also just hearing, especially like stuff like Rush and Genesis, hearing your reactions to like music that was a little bit more, you know, romantic in terms of like its structure and like some of the Tony Banks stuff where it's just like a lot of big chords, like you know, one for the vine or when, you know, some of the wind and weathering stuff or yeah. that I just, just hearing you react to that in real time and you're following the chords and you're like, Oh, he did this. And like, you know, like, Oh, it's so cool the way they did this. And went back to this, and, you know, you just, you're picking it apart in a way that's just like, it's just, it's, it's, um, it's always fun to hear smart people talk about their craft. Right. You know what I mean? And, and when you're a fan of that craft, like music, it's just all the more fun. Yeah. And when you're hearing somebody, I mean, you get, you get all the juiciness of a reaction, like, oh, he's going to love this. What's about to happen? He doesn't know what's coming. Like mm-hmm. you get that, you know, when you know the music and the reactor doesn't, you get that anticipation. You're like, oh, what's he going to think of this? You know, that, that's the fun of it. And that's always yeah. there. But just the deeper level of analysis, sometimes you're bringing up the sheet music and you're, we can watch it go by in real time, watching the piano parts and such. It's like, yeah, I've just really enjoyed it. And I used to, I mean, I, and during COVID, like you were, you were a lot of my treadmill entertainment or my, well, I awesome. should, I should say, yeah, like my, uh, my Stairmaster or whatever. Yeah. My yeah. elliptical. Um, I was watching you on the elliptical a lot and it was just, it was really fun. And, and, uh, and, you know, we exchanged messages at some point and it was kind of cool to, to know that you were kind of aware of me and stuff. Yeah. And so, and so it's fun to actually get to talk to you and, and meet you for real. It's great. I love it. Yeah. It's fun. Um, it's, uh, it's just the way that I developed over uh, many, many years of how to, mm-hmm. how I need to listen to music if I'm going to learn it, you know, like absorb be, it. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Because there would be these mm-hmm. classes in music school where they would do these drop the needle tests, these repertoire mm-hmm. tests 
where they would, okay. you know, but yeah. back, you know, in my day, it was uh, fast forward to two minutes on the CD and not just drop the needle, <laughs> you know, but right, they right. would, they would start playing something and you'd have to be listening like, Oh, that's the second movement to Brahms third symphony. Mm -hmm. And you'd have mm -hmm. to know the repertoire. And so I'd have mm -hmm. to listen to these symphonies are long. And you'd have yeah, to be, what yeah. can I remember about it that if I heard it again, I could recall it. Distinguishes it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So I would be hearing key areas. I would be hearing form. I would be hearing instrumentation, just anything that I mm -hmm. could differentiate. And so it's just me verbalizing the way that I'm accustomed to mm -hmm. letting a new piece of music to me wash over me. I'm just uh, calling, really, it goes back to sports. It's, I'm just calling balls and strikes. I'm doing play by play. Mm -hmm. You know, right, it's like, right. there's, yeah. there's that, yeah. that just happened. And that just happened because we need those people, even though we're watching the game to tell us what actually just happened. And so it, it helps, yeah. you know, helps us understand it a little bit differently. So mm -hmm. it's been uh, every time I treat it almost like a game. Um, mm -hmm. can, what can I terse out? Like about follow the bouncing song? note. Yeah. Right, you know, and, <laughs> right. and mm -hmm. what can I say about it that adds value? Um, yeah, yeah, and exactly. um, yeah, we're uh, just past our 800th episode on YouTube. Nice, and nice. I've got, and I've done additionally on our Patreon. I've done now more than 70 full albums. Oh, that's amazing! That's great. It's crazy, and we do some for you. some fan favorite stuff where people like this mm -hmm. month we're picking our favorite summer songs, and then they all vote on it, and then okay. I do like a whole countdown. I do I do my best. Casey Kasem. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Well, and um I I think well, why don't you tell people like for the for the sake of my channel, mm -hmm. tell us some of the people that you've interviewed on your channel. Wow. So um <clears throat> I've interviewed Annie Haslam from Renaissance. She was a really great interview. Uh I also talked to uh Devin Townsend. Uh no, I didn't talk to Devin Townsend. Why am I that's how it's who I want to talk to. <laughs> Um, <laughs> he's next I'm going to bring up all of these so I don't forget actually. Well, Steve Hackett you yeah said Rick I got Wakeman. to talk to Steve I, and uh, um, let's see if I go to YouTube and I go to my channel I'm going to forget mm -hmm. I do and Jordan from yeah Jordan Theater Lutus and, uh, mm -hmm. and I go to my playlists and I've got and Ho Hogarth from Marillion and... yeah Steve Hogarth Marillion's mm -hmm. one of my favorite mm -hmm. new uh, bands at least new to me Shucks, now have I you seen it. my Kaylee cover? I have a cover of Kaylee. I have not seen that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Wow. I talked with Neil Morse. Um, nice. Let's see. Um, who else? Ross Jennings from Haken. Uh, Michael McGlynn. Do you know Michael from Anuna? I don't know Michael. That's okay. He's a cool. wonderful Irish um, musician. Nice. Um, nice. Let's see. Rachel Flowers. I just want to. Do you know Rachel? I don't know her. No, uh, I don't. Who's she? Who's she? She's a, she or is she's a up. blind pianist who is oh, a wow. Keith Emerson type oh, wow. player extraordinaire. Nice. She, she does covers of nice. ELP and it's incredible. Nice. Uh, Nick DiVergilio, nice. I talked with Nick. Um, yeah, Steve Hackett. Uh, the guys from Big Big Train. That's one of my favorite okay. bands. If you don't nice. know them, I was going to ask you this too, if you had like some independent or lesser known artists besides, you know, that, that you would like for like my audience to know about big, big train there. Um, I've got one of their albums back here. These guys are from Britain. And if you like, okay. Gen if you like Genesis, if you like seventies right Genesis in a new 21st century style, this is the band. Oh, that's cool. I love these guys. Oh, yeah. I, I will. You know, I don't listen to a lot of current music, and that's just a function of my age more than anything. Mm -hmm. my, I have two young sons that kind of expose me to uh, some of their music, and and my girlfriend <laughs> exposes me to her music. She's she's my age, but she has a younger taste than I do. Uh -huh. But um, I was gonna say, I I see your OK Computer back there. I'm a huge Radiohead fan yeah. too. I love singing Tom York. Yeah, he's he's amazing. Some so I just want, but it, like I was asking you about your. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was asking about your interviews because I wanted to show people that I'm in good company with the people that you've interviewed. Yeah, you, uh, <laughs> I've been very blessed uh, to, to have people yeah. say yes. I even got to interview I, I, um, Martin O'Donnell, the guy, the Halo uh, composer, the gaming. Oh, okay. I talked with Martin. I, and, and I was going to ask you if, you if you ever thought about doing like film work since you're a composer, you know? You know. Or have you done any? 
I haven't. I'd love to. Um, I've just never been asked to do it. Um, okay, I know. And yeah, yeah. And I've been so busy with the Daily Doug over the last couple of years. I've hardly written anything new. I've been trying to Makes write sense. a um, uh, a prog song, uh, and I've got some work <laughs> okay. on it. But um, right on. Uh, it's it's it just you know when I've got all of uh, you know, all of these people that are asking me to listen to the music that they love, and and mm -hmm. there's demand for that then mm -hmm. I'm, I, it's hard to turn away from that demand. Sort of your, and that's like, that's why when people ask me about original music too, like, do you do originals? I'm like, well, covers are kind of my bread and butter. So, yeah. and there's not like this, you know, people aren't beating down the door to hear my originals. So I kind of stick with what's working, but yeah. yeah. And I just love, I'm such a music fan that it's like, I enjoy singing covers, like probably more than singing originals because I feel like I'm like, there's less, I'm less judged. <laughs> I don't know, less right. scrutiny or something or less like, right. The, you know, like it's just that there's already a familiarity, you know. And if there's one thing that I've learned in doing this channel, it's no matter how uh, affable or nice I am, when it comes down mm -hmm. to it, it really is all about the repertoire. You know, yeah. people yeah. respond to, oh, he's doing that mm -hmm. song. He's going to love mm -hmm. it or, or he's going to hate it. Let me watch, you know, or <laughs> right, that sort of right. thing. Uh, it comes down to mm -hmm. repertoire. Speaking of that, besides your mega viral Africa video mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the cover from toto uh which by the way one of the best bands of all time right toto yeah yeah, yeah. They're, they're unbelievable yep, right yep. uh mm -hmm. what's besides that one what's another video that you would point uh my viewers to to check oh, out you your, your stuff that uh that thank you're you really asking. proud of thank you well, it just so happens that I've a couple of my most recent releases are some of the best work I've done. And it's me live with a bass player and a string quartet playing cool. acoustic classic rock covers. And one of the ones that like the last thing I released is probably one of the best things I've ever done, which is my cover of uh, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road by Elton John with a string quartet and a bass player. And it sounds beautiful. That's and we awesome. also did, we've also. That's yeah. a hard vocal. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I mean, you should listen to it. I think it sounds really great. Awesome. <laughs> if I can say so myself. Yeah, and I did Baker Street, you know, the Jerry Rafferty, and nice. we did, you know, violin instead of saxophone, and we did, we did um, Died in Your Arms by Cutting Crew, and the bass player Bryce actually sent it to the singer of Cutting Crew, and he responded and saying he loved it. He thought it was great. So that was super cool. Um, yeah, but um, apart from that, um, so I would say the Goodbye Yellow Brick Road with the String Quartet, my latest release, is a solid way to start. But the most viewed video on my channel is actually not Africa. Africa has like 17 million views or something. And the one that has the most million, most views is leader of the band. Oh, did I freeze? I thought you, um, yeah. My video's like frozen. You. Yeah. That's Shocks. weird. I'll toggle, I'll, I'll toggle it off and on and see if it helps. Maybe I'll come back here in a second. Anyway, but um, my, yeah, my cover of um, leader of the band by Dan Fogelberg is the most viewed video on my channel. And it has like 35 million views. And, or something like that. And, and most of that traffic is coming from the Philippines. But um, that's oh. a beautiful song if you're not familiar with it. And it's got great harmonies. And um, and so, yeah, here I come, I think. I just, yeah, rebooting I come, your, back? your Yeah, let me get rid of it. Let me close this out. Yeah, let me just close that camera there software. Go. Oh, there we go. There okay, go. yeah, sorry. Yeah, so anyway, um, Leader of the Band and is a great one. And that's, uh, that's one that a, lo a lot of people like watch over and over again. <laughs> Apparently, it's like an Aaliyah. Well, so, I yeah, I checked anyway. out your website and uh, and you know I saw that uh, your your Beatles uh, night tomorrow night there in Colorado, mm -hmm. and I also mm -hmm. saw that you're coming yeah. to Maryland later this year. Mm -hmm. That's that's not too mm -hmm. far of a drive for me. Uh, well, man, if you want to come, I'll put you on the guest list for sure. If you want to make it, that'd be fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm going and I'm going to Ireland in October and going back to Germany in January and. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm getting around a bit. Wow! So you've been you've mm -hmm. performed in a lot of different countries now. Um, yeah. What this is this is my question. Um, what's the same and what's different with crowds okay. from around the world? Uh, what's the same? They all want to hear Africa. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and and my my word of advice to you, future cover artists, is if you're going to have a signature song that goes viral, make sure it's pretty easy to sing. <laughs> no, Africa is always a challenge for the song. Take a lot, um, take me yeah, yeah, good exactly. Lord, that's it, high. Does it does you know, take a lot. Yeah. You know what? I, <laughs> I, I am. I. It was just this year when I realized that's two different singers. 
on the yeah, original right? recording. I didn't know either. I, I had no like, idea either. How does that guy have yeah. a great range? It's two guys. <laughs> Well, I didn't even watch the freaking music video, and I still was confused. <laughs> you know, in the video, it's two different guys. I'm just like, yeah, I just like, yeah, I just, yeah. Well, wow, listen to Rosanna. that head voice. Like, yeah, like, like Rosanna's like Steve Lukather's the verses, and then Bobby Kimball's the, like the high part. And I had no idea it was two people. Yeah. But it's three people if you put those songs together. Like Africa's the verses are a different guy. That's yeah. David Page, the guy who wrote it. And I got to meet David Page, and he was super nice about like telling me yeah. that, you know, he's like, thank you for covering my song, and you sing it better than we do, and. He told people that anytime he has anyone over to his house, he shows them my cover. Yeah. So that was, yeah, it was super cool to meet the guy who the, wrote Africa. The voice is instant credibility because I was on a Zoom with some of my top tier patrons last weekend. And I told them that I was going to be talking with you. And some of them knew who you were and some of them didn't. I said, well, here, we're going to play this, the song. And they, I put on Africa and they're here. Dum, dum, mm-hmm. dum, 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 you know? And then mm-hmm. they, and they're like, okay, instant credibility. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay it's got game you know let's do it so the, the, nice. um yeah. it's it's part of it you know it's mm-hmm. it's uh you, you uh you make use of the skills and the innate abilities that you have you try to uh do them mm-hmm. to the best of your ability be humble but be an authority on, on yeah. what you're interested in and just uh yeah have fun with it and uh, enjoy the camaraderie with all the people that are joining in. That's what's great about the arts. Yeah. You know? It's really cool. Exactly. And I'll, I'll say like, you know, I've been, again, going back to the Beatles, I've been, you know, listening to some of these Beatles songs that I listened to as a kid. And I was just like, I just, you know, I still tap into that sense memory of just like, just the joy of that music and the innocence of it. And just like stuff like ticket to ride, or, I mean, just like, just beautiful simple songs that are yeah. just they just gave me such joy as a child that like when i hear them or when i sing them i still get that feeling and i like i want to give that to the people that love this music too and that's that's just like the best gift in the world is to be able to give the gift of music to other people and like i love that it's so great really great well i wish you all mm-hmm. the best it's been fun to chat with you here we've been, we could probably keep you as well man. for another hour you know i know we and uh, all day. Yeah, i'd definitely. love to keep in touch uh down the line yeah we should so the next time you're on yeah. the east coast i'll try to get out to a show absolutely and, uh, absolutely and maybe i'll try to get one of your uh your covers your performances on, on the daily doug and uh, we can. Oh, that would that be fun. Way. Yeah. Well, so, you could do the, you could do the Yellow Brick Road. You know, that, that I advise fun. it. I don't think I've ever. Yeah, that's a, I know the song, of course, but I yeah. I, I don't think I've ever uh, featured it on the channel. That's been the weird thing is that people are like, "Well, what about <laughs> this? Like, you've never done right. Bruce Hornsby. Well, he's one of my favorites, <laughs> and this is all oh, about cool, me cool. discovering new stuff. You know, yeah, so yeah. there's a few people that I've heard yeah. throughout the years, and some that I had just completely neglected. And uh, right on. so we're on the road. Here. I'll be, I'll let you know, Doug, that I'll be in, um, back in New York city at the cutting room in Manhattan. Like it's in April, I think, or May. So I'll, awesome. I'll opinion about that for sure. That'd be fun. Yeah. yeah if we're mm-hmm. like halfway in between New York and Philadelphia. Uh, okay. So okay. We're, uh, I'd love to get back to Philly. I just need a venue, but yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Philly's a fun, Philly's a cool, fun man. town. Yeah. So this yeah, has I've been there a couple times. This has been really great. Uh, thank you for yeah, yeah. reaching out to me and uh, best of luck as you continue Thanks. on and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep being fans. All right. Yeah. I appreciate that. And I'll keep watching daily Doug. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Thanks, Mike. Thanks man. Yeah. Thank See you. you. See ya. See ya.